Hello there friends, welcome back to another episode of Generation Tech. My name is Alan. In the most recent episode of the Obi-Wan Kenobi TV series, we get a closer look at Fortress Inquisitorius, the home and base of the Inquisitors. Now before we continue, there are minor spoilers in this video about episode 4 of the Kenobi TV series, in case you guys haven't seen it yet. And so basically today, I want to talk about what appears to be a secret prison or museum that is found within this very interesting looking base. In this video, we're going to talk about what exactly this facility is. And we'll also look at the prisoners being held in these individual cells and we'll see if we can identify a few of them. There are definitely some cool Easter eggs here. So anyway, Fortress Inquisitorius, let's talk about this exquisite waterfront property, shall we? Uh, located on the beautiful water moon of Nur, which orbits around Mustafar, this luxurious structure boasts neo-imperial styling at its finest. This can be seen in the monolithic spire that serves as the command tower and hangar for this entire base. Keeping with the water theme that runs counter to Darth Vader's lava theme on Mustafar, the majority of this facility actually lies beneath the ocean. You see, after 14 BBY, when two Inquisitors went rogue, a destructive battle between Darth Vader and these two Inquisitors ended up killing an important Imperial Senator. Palpatine had the Inquisitors moved off of Coruscant, which is where their original headquarters used to be, and they were moved to this more remote location on Earth. He was apparently very pissed off about the death of that Senator. And so during a mission to save Princess Leia from the base, Obi-Wan Kenobi actually ends up in the underwater portions of the base, and he finds himself in a very grotesque looking prison, or perhaps it's a trophy room of sorts. Suspended in some type of orange amber are various Jedi from the Clone Wars period. Now the scene immediately reminds me of this one episode in Rebels, which has a similar type of vibe to it. This episode took place on another Sith-related facility known as the Spire. It was originally a Separatist facility designed to house dangerous prisoners, specifically Force users like Maul. During the early years of the Galactic Civil War, the Grand Inquisitor leaked information that Jedi Master Luminara Unduli was imprisoned in the Spire. This information was designed to attract any remaining Jedi in the galaxy to the Spire, which was turned into a trap. And Kanan Jarrus and Ezra Bridger run directly into that trap. The two find out that Master Luminara is in fact in the Spire, but she has died long ago. The only thing left of her were some echoes in the Force and her entombed body. I'm not 100% sure what we see in the Spire is the same as what we see in Fortress Inquisitorius. It should be noted that Master Luminara is definitely dead in that scene in the Spire, and she's basically just bones at this point. On a more serious note, guys, ever since Order 66 occurred, a massive amount of lightsabers appeared on the market, which were previously off limits to the average consumer like you or me. But decades later, legitimate sources for Jedi memorabilia, including their lightsabers, have become increasingly hard to find. And therefore, the credits you need to spend on a lightsaber has gone up significantly ever since, and there are a bunch of fakes and knockoffs floating around in the market. Which is why I'm excited to announce that our sponsor for today's video, Onasaber.com, is announcing a giveaway of free lightsabers. For the month of June, they're giving away four lightsabers in the form of four 100% off codes that can be used on their website. All you have to do is subscribe to their YouTube or follow them on Instagram. Then on June 15th, they'll release two codes on their social media, one at 12 p.m. Central Daily Time and another two at 5 p.m. Central Daily Time. We'll link onasaber.com social media down below in the description so you guys can follow and subscribe to them. And then make sure to mark down the date June 15th on your calendar. On top of that, Ownersaber.com will be giving you guys 30% off of their Xenopixel line like this beautiful replica of Obi-Wan Kenobi's first lightsaber. You guys have probably seen me waving these lightsabers around in my other videos. They're featured, packed, and a whole lot of fun. Also guys, I gotta say, as someone who used to work in video production, uh, the light quality from these LED strips are phenomenal. I mean, it looks really beautiful. Plus, you know, you could probably use this in a Zoom call and give yourself a more dramatic kind of look when you're talking to your boss. Anyway guys, if you do end up winning uh, one of these codes, contact ownersaber.com or DM them, and they will give you a shout out on their Instagram. Well guys, thank you for your patience. On to the rest of the video. The individuals we see in Fortress Inquisitoris seem far more intact, almost as if they were frozen in stasis. It's not carbonite, obviously, but some type of transparent amber. It almost reminds me of those fossils from Jurassic Park. 
Now, upon further research, I found out that uh, what Massa Luminara was placed in is actually called a stasis field. And so that's actually designed to preserve flush. I don't know if it's capable of keeping people alive, but it definitely stops decomposition, which can explain why these individuals look very fresh. Not that I would want to eat them or anything because I believe that cannibalism is wrong. Sometimes I like sticking my neck out there for causes. I'm guessing that a stasis field will do a lot less damage to an individual's tissue rather than freezing them. Uh, most organic beings are made out of liquids like water, and so freezing them in a conventional way will just outright kill them. Carbonite freezing is supposed to be a safer method, but there are still massive side effects from this process. It's also possible what we're seeing here is what's known as an entropy field. This kind of works like a stasis field. It just pauses time basically and stops things from progressing. Dryden Voss actually kept a bunch of rare creatures in entropy fields on his ship for his own amusement. During the Clone Wars, when Clone Trooper Echo was injured, he was captured by the Separatist Alliance, and then the Techno Union would hold him within a cryocycle stasis pod, which would also preserve his body. He would eventually be resuscitated by Captain Rex. And so the question we have to ask ourselves now is, are these individuals actually alive, or are they just corpses that the Inquisitors like to keep as trophies? Because I actually recognize a few of the people trapped in these, uh, you know, amber containment fields. Um, and from what I can tell, there aren't any major wounds on their body, so it is possible that they are alive, right? Does that mean that Obi-Wan Kenobi could potentially rescue a bunch of Jedi or even restart the Jedi Order? I mean, judging by what we already have seen from the original trilogy, that most likely never happens, or we probably would have heard of it. It's probably also too much story for this mini-series, which is almost over. Plus, Obi-Wan Kenobi calls it a tomb, which seems to indicate that he thinks these individuals are dead. So who exactly is trapped in these tanks? Well, let's take a look. First up is Terra Sanube. He was a male Cosnian Jedi Master who was already in his second century of life during the Clone Wars. You might remember him in the background of the Jedi Temple in several Clone Wars episodes. He would be featured in the lightsaber loss episode where Soka Tano, of course, loses her lightsaber. Terra Sanubi might move around very slowly and seem like he's on the verge of falling asleep at all times, but his mind was incredibly sharp. He actually served as a Jedi investigator, and he specifically worked with the underworld elements on the planet of Coruscant, which I gotta say is no easy job. It's probably one of the toughest jobs. Terra Sanube was an incredibly patient individual, and his centuries of experience and wisdom allow him to be a very efficient problem solver. He rarely has to exert much energy at all. When necessary, though, his cane did double as a lightsaber. I wouldn't be surprised if Terra Sanube was able to escape the initial purge, at least using his underworld contacts. We're also given a wide shot of this facility, and on the left, we see an individual who seems to have dreads. His appearance is very similar to that of Quinlan Boss. You know, the badass Jedi Knight, who was known for also being very close to the underworld elements of the galaxy. At the end of the Clone Wars, he was actually chosen for a mission to assassinate Count Dooku. He ended up falling to the dark side, and he would actually fall in love with Asajj Ventress. It's, it's a really long and beautiful story, and Ventress even grows hair, and it's far less frightening and almost likable. We already know that Quinlan Voss survives Order 66. He's also made it to that safe house on Mapuzo because he carved this inspirational quote onto the wall. Only when the eyes are closed can you truly see. Classic Quinlan Voss. It should also be noted that Tala Durth seemed to think that Quinlan Voss was still around and... Yeah, he helps now and again, smuggling younglings. But it is possible that, you know, Quinlan Voss has been captured and she just doesn't know about it. On the right side, we have another individual who seems quite familiar, at least his species is. Judging by the two horns coming out of his head, it's an Iktochi. Perhaps it's Master Sassy Tin, a legendary starfighter pilot who was actually killed by Palpatine in his office when the Jedi tried to arrest him. So maybe these guys in the tanks are dead? The other Iktochi Jedi that I know about had a broken right horn. His name was Farron Barr, and Vader cut him down during the Mon Cala uprising. Then we have this next individual who is a lady, or perhaps a man, I'm not 100% sure. But they kind of remind me of Chi Ikwe Papanoida, daughter of Baron Notoloiski Papanoida George Lucas. Chi Ikwe was the senator of Pantora and was a part of the Delegation of 2000, a group of brave senators who demanded that after the war ended that Chancellor Papatine would return his emergency powers to the Senate. Most members of this delegation mysteriously died, or 
just disappeared. But because Chi Ikwe was not known to be force sensitive, I think it's unlikely that she would be held in an Inquisitor's base. Next, we have this individual garbed in some kind of traditional cold weather fur and leather armor. Remember guys, these individuals don't all have to be Jedi, they could just be Force users because the Inquisitors were technically supposed to chase after Force users, not just Jedi. Then there's this lady here. I'm gonna go out on a limb and make a pretty poor judgment here and say that this is a Deepa Balaba, the master of Kanan Jars. She was gunned down during Order 66 on the planet of Collar. The reason why I'm not 100% sure it is her is because the woman in the tank does not have a jewel on her forehead and brow or the Chalkatan marks of illumination, which the Jedi Master was known for. We also have this other woman who's wearing a poncho and a red hairband. Again, she looks like some kind of uh, tribal force user maybe, not an official member of the Jedi Order. And then at the very end, Obi-Wan Kenobi spots a chubby little young one who still has his training helmet on. Now guys, I really do hope that this scene means something. It's not just some Easter egg designed to make the fans go ooh and, and ah. Um, I think that there's a lot of potential here and I hope the story returns to the scene, either in Obi-Wan Kenobi or another one of the upcoming shows. And I guess this all depends on whether the Inquisitors like catching their prey dead or alive in a stasis field. From what we can tell with that poor Jedi on Tatooine, they do generally end up killing their prey. But then again, judging by how well preserved these individuals are, maybe they're being saved for one reason or another. We know that the Empire loves to experiment with Force Sensitives. So there you have it guys, that is my breakdown of this really cool scene on Fortress Inquisitoris. I'd love to hear your opinions about this in the comment section down below. Well guys, I hope you enjoyed today's episode. Don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification button down below so you don't miss out on the rest of our awesome content. As usual, my name is Alan, reminding you that my allegiance is to the Republic, to democracy.